Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Invasion of Alara Bramble Familiar Fetch Quest combo deck. So the concept behind this deck is ingenious. We've got Invasion of Alara, a 5-mana battle, saying when it enters a battlefield, exile cards from the top of our library until we exile two non-land cards with mana value 4 or less. We get to cast one of them for free and the other one goes into our hand. Looking at the curve, it may seem like we have a lot of cards we can hit with Invasion of Alara, but in reality, the only two cards we can possibly hit are Bramble Familiar and Up the Beanstalk. Everything else here is actually higher than 4 mana cost. We've got Leyline Binding at 6 mana, even though we can potentially cast it for just a single white if we have enough basic land types in play as an efficient removal spell. We've got Hurt Migration, which we can discard for 1 on a green to fetch up a basic and gain 3 life, but it's still a 7 mana sorcery to make a bunch of 3-3 beast tokens. There's the new Virtue of Persistence, which we can also use as an adventure first, and that will shrink an opposing creature down, gain 2 life, and then later the 7 mana enchantment can maybe re animate a creature from any graveyard turn after turn. Then at 3 mana there's a prototype creature, which is a potential 3 drop as a 3-3 with menace and lifelink and a bit of built-in protection, but it's still a 7 mana creature, so 7-5 in that case with menace, lifelink and ward. And then we also have a Planeswalker with the completed ability, so while it can be cast for 4 mana and 2 life, it still counts as a 5 drop for Invasion of Alara. So that means that if we cast our Invasion of Alara, the only cards we can possibly hit are Bramble Familiar and Up the Beanstalk, which is a 2 mana enchantment when it enters and whenever we cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, draw a card. So it's pretty nice in a deck that's playing a Leyline Binding, which can cheaply replace itself and exile an opposing non-land permanent, but will always hit at least one Bramble Familiar. Even if we do also get Up the Beanstalk, we simply put it in hand and decide to cast Bramble Familiar for free. And then an interesting rules interaction here is that we're allowed to cast the adventure half of the card as opposed to the creature half. So now we get to fetch quest for free, milling seven cards and then putting a creature enchantment or land from among those onto the battlefield. And those include cards like Leyline Binding, we can cast the seven mana Virtue of Persistence right away, and potentially having milled a few expensive creatures we can reanimate in the meantime. We could also hit Flash Gorger, which will then be the seven mana version, so a seven five. And then we can also potentially find some of our heavy hitters, such as Cemetery Desecrator, Itali, or even Atraxa, which also has a great synergy as we have a wide range of card types, with Battle being one of them. We've got Planeswalker, Artifact, Enchantment, Sorcery, Creature. So there's a lot of value to be had with Atraxa, of course, and then a 7-7 that can potentially stabilize us and close out the game all at once. And then the other synergy with Invasion of Alara is Cemetery Desecrator. May seem a little bit out of place alongside Atali and Atraxa, but it's definitely here for a reason. The 4-4 with Menace, when it enters the battlefield or dies, we get to exile another card from a graveyard. When we do, either remove X counters from target permanent where X is the mana value of the exiled card, or we can give a creature an opponent controls minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is once again the mana value of that exiled card. So let's say we use herd migration early in the game, discard it, get a basic. Now we've got a 7 mana sorcery in the graveyard, so if we exile it with a desecrator we can now remove 7 defense counters from our invasion of Alara and immediately transform it into Awaken the Maelstrom. And this sorcery is awesome. It has all colors, says a target player draws 2 cards, then we can put an artifact card from our hand onto the battlefield. This is after having drawn two cards, so we could potentially draw into a Phyrexian Fleshgorger and then put it on the battlefield for free as it's seven mana version. And then we can create a token that's a copy of a permanent we control. So we can potentially copy or desecrator that's already on the battlefield and maybe once again transform an invasion of Alara we have in play or take out an opposing creature, maybe even a planeswalker by removing loyalty counters. So there's a ton of versatility there. And then we're not done, we can still destroy any target permanent, including an opposing land if we'd like. And we also get to distribute 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters among 1, 2 or 3 creatures we control. So Awaken the Maelstrom is awesome and can definitely catch us back up if we're behind if we manage to land Invasion of Lara, fetch quest, hit Desecrator, transform Invasion, copy Desecrator, all of a sudden we're definitely stabilizing nicely. 
and then we get to untap with a ton of extra cards in hand, and maybe slam down an Itali, which can cast another spell for free, also great to reanimate with our Virtue of Persistence, and then as we mentioned Atraxa, another great finisher. Then Luka is here to kind of bridge the gap in the early game, we may not have a lot going on, so we can cast this for 4 mana, and then it can maybe help us ramp out a Desecrator or an Itali by generating extra mana, and then the minus 4 can also be quite effective to stabilize the board if we get to cheat something expensive into play. So Luka is mostly here as something to bridge the gap between our early game and the expensive 6 and 7 mana cards, especially if we don't have our Invasion of Alara, it can be nice to ramp out our Desecrator or Itali ahead of schedule, otherwise we might end up with a pretty clunky hand. And then a mana base is pretty tricky, of course want lots of trial lands to not only enable domain on Leyline Binding and Herd Migration, but also just to fix our mana. And then we also want one of each basic to find with our Herd Migration. Want to avoid having too many of the same basic in play, because then we may not be able to cast our Invasion of Alara on curve. Also getting a forest can be a liability if we have a Bramble Familiar that we're using to ramp, since we can of course just cast this as a 2 mana 2-2 two two that taps for green, can also later pick it back up to still cast the adventure if we're interested and if we have a familiar in play early then forest doesn't help us cast an invasion of alara so we would prefer getting a different basic then we've got a few dual lands mainly black ones since we need double black for flash gorger and for an early virtue of persistence and then of course green is also important since that can actually enable our author mana fixing and then plenty of trial lands which have multiple basic land types like the rafine's tower is plains island swamp so it contributes towards three basic land types for domain so if we have just one tri land in play, we can cast a 3 mana Leyline Binding, but we can often discount it down to just a single white. And then Hurt Migration makes a beast token for each basic client type, so also benefits from having all five. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got a bit of mana acceleration, and then our Invasion of Alara, plus a good amount of mana fixing opponent on what could be green-white enchantments, which can be a very scary, aggressive deck. Want to play a green sword so we don't have to pay life to use herd migration or cast familiar. And turn to naturalist, I'm probably better off taking out. And then next turn we can keep developing our mana. Just want to try to slow the opponent down, even just a tad. And then Herd Migration versus Bramble Familiar. Familiar might get removed by an ossification. But it could technically set up an Invasion of Alara next turn. If I use Herd Migration, I do have the flexibility of next turn playing Luka, adding mana, and then still playing Bramble Familiar afterwards. So maybe that's still better. But now we don't have the high upside of potentially drawing an untapped land and casting Invasion on turn 4. Another Weaver pumps the original one, and a Reign of Truth. Okay. So that's hitting us for 6 already. Luckily we can gain a bit of life back. And then which land to get is an interesting question. Probably need to white mana here. Headquarters is a draw. Yeah, we could go for Luca play Familiar, but then there's a decent chance they exile Familiar, kill Luca, and then we're back to square one. So instead I'll just play this tapped. Can still play Familiar as kind of a distraction here. Since we have plenty of other things we can cast at uh, seven mana. And then next turn we should be able to cast our invasion and hope for the best. It's going to have to do quite a bit of catching up. Generous Visitor, three mana left for ossification, so yep, as expected, Exile's familiar. Could also Exile Planeswalker for what it's worth. And then taking at least 10 damage. Another Invasion, I don't mind. Back to back. Can this stabilize us? We're guaranteed to hit Fetch Quest. And then we get up the Beanstalk to maybe play in the future. And we did not actually hit what we were hoping for, just a Leyline Binding. I think that's still better than a land here, since we need to make sure we don't die. And Exile Weaver. It's 
So hopefully this bought us a turn. And then next turn with a Desecrator. Exiling Herd Migration, we can transform Invasion of Alara. But I don't actually have the mana to play it here, so just have to play another Invasion of Alara and hope for the best. So that's probably our last fetch quest. And this time we did hit Cemetery Desecrator. And then get rid of a 7-drop. Herd Migration we can't reanimate with Virtue of Persistence. Remove 7 counters. Cast Awaken the Maelstrom. And I'll get to draw 2. What do we destroy? Portrait versus Weaver. I think Weaver's carrier. And then we get to copy... Cemetery Desecrator, so we can transform another Invasion of Alara and get some plus one counters to boot. And there should be another 7 drop in here. And do the same thing. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of the goal of the deck. Now we get to destroy maybe even the planes, so we also get back the familiar. And copy Desecrator once again, killing Portrait of Michiko. And I could also get rid of one of the opponent's creatures here. Maybe actually Visitor now that our opponent's down to one enchantment. Haven't played Land for the turn yet. Okay, even have to discard to hand size. And a land can go alongside. Probably won't be needing up the beanstalk. Is your opponent all of a sudden facing triple cemetery desecrator? We've got an Atraxa we can cast soon. Another ossification goes for desecrator. And our opponent explodes. They probably wanted to exile the token instead of the real one in case we once again destroy their land. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a hand that's capable of casting Virtue of Persistence. At least the adventure half. Pretty far from casting anything else and we're missing our invasion of Alara. So we'll take a mulligan. Okay, I've got our up the beanstalk. Which is good with Leyline Binding. Yeah, don't actually hate this. And then Itali is pretty far from being cast. Can also hang on to Bramble Familiar to use the Adventure. Opponent with turn 1 Mountain, but no play. Amisha's Foundry, so still points towards Red Aggro. And we're gonna have to take a damage to play up the Beanstalk, but seems worthwhile. Next turn, play Mountain, cast a cheap Leyline Binding and found another one. So those can find more action, hopefully an Invasion of Alara. But for now our opponent gets to make use of the Battle Mouse to get a discount. Maybe play a pair of 2-drops. It's just going to be a Godric, 3-3 three, three Haste. So that's going to be the target of Leyline Binding and we found our Invasion, perfect. So can maybe wait and then uh, exile Godric before it transforms. Or we can wait and see where the plus one plus one from Battle Mouse goes. It's going to be a Halberd. So there is an argument for exiling the Battle Mouse in response so they can cast another two drop. This also enables celebration on Godric, but sure. Battle Mouse bumps itself. And then Godric might get plus one plus so here if they don't have another spell to cast. So I don't have any blockers. But before damage, 
I have an effect. Okay, headquarters. Next turn, still play another Leyline Binding. And that should keep us alive until we play Invasion of Alara. We're at 11, so don't feel too comfortable. Could play Headquarters and then play both Familiar and Binding, just to put something else on the board. Does mean taking a bit more damage from our pain land as well, but that may be worth it. Just to put another blocker into play. And then do I have to exile Battle Mouse now? Could also wait and see if they have some scary 3 or 4 mana haste creature. Maybe exile Battle Mouse in response to them casting a spell, although they could still have an instant they can play at a discount if that's the case. So there are definitely arguments for just uh, casting the binding right away. And then next turn, Invasion of Alara with the red. This can tap for green, let's say blue, black and white. Play with fire goes for familiar, don't really need it here. And then Battle Mouse represents the most damage. Could see a Lightning Strike in response for one mana. But we don't. Now we don't have something expensive in Graveyard in case we hit Desecrator without milling something else more expensive. But I'm still just gonna slam down Invasion. And a Monstrous Rage is next. That's essentially plus three damage. So they're pretty close to burning us out. And if they have another burn spell in hand, they could just make that happen. I don't think gaining a life here is a solution, because they still have a bunch of damage on the board. I'm gonna go down to two here. And draw with up the beanstalk. Which has been pretty decent for us this game. And fetch quest. Putting Atrax on the battlefield may not be enough if they have a burn spell. So how about an Itali? Keep the suspense. And another invasion of Alara. Don't mind if I do. Draw with up the beanstalk. And that's our last fetch quest. Virtue of Persistence could also gain some life back if we use the adventure. And a cemetery desecrator is now an option too. Flesh Gorger is not going to gain life immediately. So, we can guarantee two life, or we can desecrate her, transform another invasion of Alara. And that's uh, probably going to be better, but it's definitely a bit of a gamble here. Copy Desecrator to transform another invasion of Alara. Opponent's probably just holding a burn spell here, waiting to untap. And uh, destroy maybe just their red mana, so they wouldn't be able to cast a burn spell to begin with. Our deck is certainly doing some stuff. Have to be careful we don't end up decking somehow. Okay, copy a permanent, so that's going to be Desecrator. Get some plus one counters. Now here is Warcrafting still on the stack. Exile another seven plus mana card, so in this case Virtue of Persistence. And transform another Invasion of Alara. And then I'm kind of hoping for some immediate life gain, but we can destroy the mountain here as well to maybe prevent the opponent from casting a burn spell. Okay, 
can put a flash gorger straight onto the battlefield with a hidden mode on Awaken the Maelstrom. And then I get to copy something else. Gives me the shots of hitting another Virtue of Persistence. And then get some more plus one counters. And keep the 8-8 Itali. And we found a Luka Bound to Ruin. And a Charming Scoundrel. Okay, so no life gain, but our opponent doesn't have any red mana. They still have a blood token. I guess it could have also sacrificed it in response to me trying to destroy it. And treasure token seems like the most useful ability. Epicure down. We hit a Leyline Binding and a Virtue of Persistence, but I've already played land for the turn. So wouldn't be able to play it even with a treasure token. So I guess Leyline Binding makes the most sense. And then I have to cast it before it goes away. And we can hit the blood token, but I'm sure opponent's gonna just sacrifice it in response. So exile their creature instead. And then Luka also doesn't make mana to cast any non-creature spells, so it wouldn't have helped with casting Virtue of Persistence. And if it deals damage, it's Luka itself dealing the damage and not the creature. So I wouldn't be able to gain life with Flesh Gorger. So I can just plus and play Bramble Familiar, I guess. Also wouldn't be able to use Herd Migration, so... Yeah, very close to gaining a life, but still dead to even a play with Fire. Alright, if our opponent's still there, I'm sure we'll see them use the Blood Token now. And then I think I'm dead to a Mountain. Opponent's got a 3-drop. We get to keep 7 cards. So Herd Migration, Atraxa, Itali, Desecrator, Familiar, and a land, and another Luka. Don't think it matters. The game is going to be decided before we cast another spell. Does our opponent have a mountain? They don't, and our opponent explodes. Wow, what a turn. That uh, took probably 10 minutes to go through it all. But uh, yeah, that's how you beat a red aggro. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand would need a couple more lands. Herd Migration can get a swamp, and then we're not too far from casting our Invasion of Alara. Opponents on mono black. Passes it back. So we could already cast a two mana leyline binding, but we can keep up the flexibility of also discarding hurt migration. Still planning to get a swamp. And could technically even use the instant speed adventure, although don't expect any haste creatures. So if we're up against a more mid rangey black deck, we should be pretty favored if we can pull off our game plan. Don't expect too much interaction. And our late game should be more powerful, even if they do get a shielder in play. So I'll get my basic swamp. Two basics left. And Desecrator can help us transform invasion, potentially. Now what I don't have is triple black for Flash Gorger on three, but that's fine. Just keep up a Leyline Binding. And then, with our current mana, we should be able to cast Invasion on 5. Shield Root, we can answer for 1 mana. Okay, and now I can actually cast Flesh Gorger. One card that could mess up our play next turn is a discard spell, maybe like a Duress. Shield Root's Edict, I don't mind. Just means we'll have a 7 mana card in the graveyard to potentially get back if we get a Virtue of Persistence or if we hit another Desecrator to transform Invasion of Alara. Although then it's usually better to exile Herd Migration. Either way, let's play this Invasion of Alara. Had to make sure to play Carpluzen Forest. And yeah, we're guaranteed to hit one of our Raccoons. We hit two of them. 
and cast a 7 mana adventure for free. And so what did we hit? Itali. Looks good. And then we're just a few turns away from casting Fetch Quest again. Go for the Throat Kills Itali, but we still generate a bit of value here with a Herd Migration and Underdog. Okay. And not bad. Still added 18 power to the board. So your opponent's going to need a Sweeper, Gixus Command, not the best answer to a bunch of 3-3s. Three and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is quite promising. We've got plenty of fixing to cast our Invasion of Alara on turn 5. Herd Migration gains a bit of life back, so against the aggro decks it can also keep us alive. And then want to start out with a green source, so headquarters it is. Turn one mountain, Phoenix Chick, so glad to have double herd migration here. Virtue of Persistence, another good card in the matchup. And sure, we'll uh, use herd migration. Next turn can use another one, play tap land. Keep Sanctum as our fifth land to play invasion on curve. And then we got to start thinking about which land to fetch up here. Don't need forests. A mountain is acceptable. That makes sense here. And yeah, we drew our Virtue of Persistence, so that works. Could also play Untapped Sanctum so I don't lose one life to cast Virtue. Or we could just play another Herd Migration, hang on to Virtue to maybe kill their next creature, which I also don't mind. It's going to be a play with Fire, end of turn. Still at 18. And a Sheevan Devastator we can now take out with Virtue. Okay. And then having a Desecrator in hand could also be useful in transforming our Invasion of Alara. Thundering Raichu also hits pretty hard. And Amishra's Foundry, Creature Land, so it's a lot of threats in one turn. So we've got to cross our fingers for an effective Invasion of Alara. Guaranteed to hit Fetch Quest. And what do we find? Cemetery Desecrator. That's awesome. Can immediately transform our Invasion of Alara by getting rid of a Herd Migration. And then, at the very least, we'll be able to finish off Thundering Raichu, but probably a lot more. And, uh, yeah, let's destroy the Mishra's Foundry here, or maybe Phoenix Chick is also reasonable. And then copy Desecrator. Get some plus one counters. And Desecrator can finish off Thundering Raiju. Okay. So we've got 11 power and toughness on the board. Opponent's got a single Phoenix Chick. Adversary gets back. Play with fire. And they can hit us for one in the air. Feels like we should be able to take over from here. A Luka can also kill some stuff. So I can present a Tutoron Clock, just gotta make sure we don't randomly die on the way back. But with Luka killing two of the opponent's creatures, it only leaves Mishra's Foundry, so no single top deck should be able to save them. So that looks good.
attack for 11. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems a little bit too slow to keep. There's no invasion of Alara either, so we'll take a mulligan. Okay, probably have to keep this, but it's still, of course, missing our signature card. And then do I keep double Virtue of Persistence, or just keep a Flesh Gorger as something I can cast? I have double black, so turn three is feasible. I think I still just uh, keep the one Virtue of Persistence, and then turn one play, probably a black source tapped. Now Trucks are also far from casting, so next turn Flash Gorger, and then hope to find Invasion at some point. Field of Ruin could also mess up our mana base. We have one of each basic to find, but still would rather not lose one of my tri lands here. Ossification exiles Flesh Gorger. At least we're hitting our land drops here. Also have the option of cycling Proving Ground, but I think I'm gonna hang on to it to try and cast some of our seven drops. A restoration, opponents are ramping. It's gonna take double Virtue or double Lochthwain Scorn to remove the 3 4 Architect. Herd Migration can get me another basic. We'll wait and see if they destroy one of my lands here with Field of Ruin, which might affect my decision on uh, which basic to search up. Although I guess we can also search up a basic with Field of Ruin itself. So it should balance out. A wedding announcement. Could consider killing the token, but maybe next turn just kill Architect. And then we've got plenty of green mana. Black could still be a bottleneck. Although that's unlikely to be the case. And a Desecrator, okay. So Desecrator can also remove counters from Wedding Announcement for what it's worth, or a Restoration of Iganjo. In this case, probably just kill the token, although it does mean having to get rid of Herd Migration, which could be a good way to transform an Invasion of Alara. Yeah, I think that's fine. And then we might see removal on Desecrator, and then hope to find an untapped land to slam down my 7-drop. Another Restoration. Can get a Plains, still play another Ossification perhaps. We can punish Ossification with our Transformed Awaken the Maelstrom. It's gonna be a Destroy Evil for now. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll remove some counters from Wedding Announcement so it doesn't transform as quickly. It does mean giving them an extra token as well. If I remove counters from Restoration, it's gonna take them longer to get another Architect going. But we would also be giving them an extra planes. Don't have to remove any counters, but I'll slow down the announcements. Okay, so double Scorn kills Architect. And then next turn we're ready to cast the Traxa. Could also play the enchantment to get back Desecrator, but not sure if we're gonna get much more value. Sarah Paragon can also get back Architects. Okay, play Atraxa, and then I want to leave white mana untapped to cast a one mana Leyline Binding. And there we go. And we found no Leyline Binding, but we found our Invasion of Alara. Our artifact is Flesh Gorger, creature is Itali. And then Sorcery Herd Migration, get an untapped land in here. And then Enchantment, I have to decide between Virtual Persistence and Up the Beanstalk, and kind of like Up the Beanstalk here for more card advantage. Not bad. Yeah, Traxa is pretty synergistic in this deck if it hits the battlefield. 
and destroy evil kills Atraxa. And a Wandering Emperor for an extra plus one counter, perhaps. Alright, just want to transform this Invasion of Alara if possible. And with a Desecrator, that's not going to be too difficult. Although I wouldn't be able to cast both right now. What I can do is play up the Beanstalk and then play Invasion. To maybe find a Leyline Binding in the process. So leave as much White Man untapped as possible. That looks good. Found our Leyline Binding. Fetch quest. And what do we get? Nothing too exciting, just another familiar, or I can grab a land, which at this point may be better. So we'll get an untapped land. And then I can leyline binding the Sarah Paragon or Architect, which can make more 1-1s. One Probably the Architect. And then I can still play Bramble Familiar. Could also get rid of the Ossification, get back Flesh Gorger, but destroying the land might still be the plan next turn. And if they have more removal for Flesh Gorger, it's not going to be too helpful. Okay, so not a bad turn. Could have been better, of course. And then I have to discard to hand size. I might fetch quests once again. 26 cards left in library. I don't think I'm casting two more Invasions of Alara since we're going to run out of Bramble Familiars. Field of Ruin might be a way for them to just destroy a land right now, since we won't have many basics left to search. Aloran destroys up the Beanstalk, actually, over Leyline Binding. And another wedding announcement. Well, feels like we can go over the top of this white midrange deck. But we will need a good turn here. Take 10 down to 10, having our life total. And another attracts out of the draw. So if we want to guarantee transforming our invasion, then we play Desecrator. And then I can exile Atraxa. Could also use Herd Migration first. But I could also play another invasion to begin with. And then I should still have the mana to play Desecrator afterwards. That looks good. We've got one Bramble Familiar left. And we hit Frex and Flesh Gorger versus Leyline Binding. Flesh Gorger might be the move here. Binding would go after. Maybe a wedding festivity. It's not all that exciting. Although I can imagine our opponent also having some more board wipes or other wandering emperors that can reset the board. So adding a ton of creatures may not be the way to go. I think I still go for Flash Gorger. And then next up, play Desecrator. And getting rid of Herd Migration. Transform our Invasion. And then I'll draw two. Start by destroying this Plains, perhaps. Or at that point we are definitely overextending into a board wipe. Just get rid of one of the wedding announcements. And then I can always copy Desecrator once again to finish off Wandering Emperor. And then we'll force the opponent to cast a Sweeper. And then we still have Itali and Atraxa to take over. So, yeah, let's get rid of the wedding announcements. Could put another Flash Gorger in play. I think I wait. And then copy Desecrator. Get some plus one counters. Might want to put them all on the Bramble Familiar in case our opponent has the... Uh, Six mana Emperor and leaves me with Familiar as the only creature. And then now get rid of a 5 drop to finish off Wandering Emperor. Uh, 
Okay. And then I could consider an attack here as well. Save if they chump. They don't. So now it might be easier for Desecrator to transform Invasion. In case they get rid of some of my cards in Graveyard. So your opponent probably has to reset the board here. Which I'm sure they can. So I wasn't too concerned about Sarah Paragon getting something back from Graveyard. Right, never mind. Opponent does actually just go for Wandering Emperor. Exiling Familiar, that's fine. And Ossification number two. Exiles Flesh Gorger at the cost of seven life. So they're down to 12. Well, it seems like they don't have a sweeper, so I feel comfortable committing more to the board. 14 cards left, so probably not casting another fetch quest. But Itali should be fine. Desecrator can transform Invasion. So we've got some decent options. One mana binding is nice too. So step one, play Desecrator, I want to say. The main concern here would be something like a farewell. Uh, exiling graveyards as well. Get rid of that wedding announcement so they can't get it back. Transform Invasion of Alara. And then now I can destroy a land. And I'll put Flesh Gorger in play for free. And copy another permanence. Can make it another Flesh Gorger or can make it Desecrator to make sure we kill Sarah Paragon here. Which is also fine. And then get some plus one counters going. So this kills the Paragon. And then I still have Virtue of Persistence and Leyline Binding to clear two blockers, so I can actually put the opponent all the way to one. Seems worthwhile. To put the opponent to one with double flash gorger in place, so they absolutely need a sweeper. And then we can still get back on the board with a herd migration, perhaps. So don't feel the need to add anything else. Alright, Sunfall's a good one. So they either top decked it or they were sandbagging it after all. At least the token won't have haste. It is pretty large and scary. I have got new moves to teach you. And then now I think just go for herd migration, make multiple bodies. Seems safer than taking a risk on Itali. And then now play a familiar. Times two maybe. Just gotta go wide, take advantage of our opponent being at one life. And hope they don't have the Eternal Wanderer in hand. That would be pretty effective. Another wedding announcement is acceptable. And a laid on arms, that's fine. So they seem pretty dead here. Make a token, two blockers, two or six attackers. And I'll make sure to jump here. And our opponent explodes. Alright, another epic battle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is not the best. Missing, of course, our invasion. If I heard migration for Swamp, still wouldn't be able to cast Flash Gorger. I do have a Leyline Binding, at least. But I think it's still a mulligan just to give ourselves a shot of finding an invasion of Alara, which we did. And then between Flesh Gorger or Atraxa. Probably prefer keeping Flesh Gorger as something I can realistically cast. 
And then we already have double black, so migration can get mountain up against the green white enchantments. So can feel too comfortable, but uh yeah, get a mountain here with third migration. Turn three can play Flesh Gorger, turn four another one, and then hopefully turn five invasion. So we're still at 20. Gonna take one from Lanor Wastes. But still nice to have an untapped black green land, which we need to both cast an early Flesh Gorger as well as our migration slash a Bramble Familiar. If their entire turn is just spent playing an Ossification here, I'm okay with it. If they can go Naturalist into Ossification, that's a bit more painful. And Calyx can also set up a very powerful turn where they remove a blocker, connect, and then remove a second one. But we luckily have a second Flesh Gorger to at least present another creature to block with. And then should have the mana to play Invasion next turn. Definitely gonna hang back. We've got red, green, black, white and blue. There's a Naturalist. Visitor up to 5-5, five, five. Calyx up to a 3-3. Three, three. And then if they have an ossification as well here, yep. Opponent can grow Calyx, essentially forcing us to chum block with a Flash Gorger. Otherwise I get to copy another ossification here. So yeah, that's what we wanted to avoid. And I'm better off jumping Calyx. So we need a pretty lucky Invasion of Alara to save us, but it could happen, which is crazy, despite being so far behind. So we're guaranteed to fetch quest. And we hit a Desecrator, so that's going to transform our Invasion of Alara since we discarded Herd Migration earlier. And then I get to draw two. We get to destroy probably the forest, giving us a Flash Gorger back as a 7-5. Also plays around a potential Hexproof trick on their creature. And then copy Desecrator here makes sense. Get some plus one counters. And then Desecrator number two can kill Calyx. And it's currently 4 4, so this is good enough. Keep those creatures in the graveyard. In case we can reanimate them later. Okay, that was not a bad turn. We've got three pretty substantial creatures on the board, dealt with Calyx. And even took out a land in the process, although Hallowed Haunting is certainly a way for the opponent to fly over for the win. But nope, opponent still concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and I gotta keep a double Invasion of Alara, even have Familiar to maybe speed things up. And a Virtue of Persistence we can cast for early interaction, and we're gonna need it against Modern Aggro. Herd Migration also a good pickup. So play our green tri land and hope to draw an untapped lands next turn, but not counting on it. So play headquarters next. And then maybe go for Virtue of Persistence, deal with the Swiss Spear as soon as possible. Play another tap land. And then Herd Migration getting an untapped basic can set up our Invasion of Alar on the subsequent turn. So definitely want to deal with the Swiss Spear. And hope not to get burnt out. So it should not matter what basic I get with Herd Migration with all these tri-lands for mana fixing. 
even found a swamp. So now I could use herd migration and still play familiar since we have two green sources. And that way I can get in front of Felden, which seems worthwhile. And then I'll get a plains. That way we have white, black, blue, green, red. Always good to double check. Lightning Strike clears familiar, but would have been four damage to my face otherwise. And get a planes and then hope for a good invasion of Alara. Kumano's two damage right away and the third invasion of Alara. Okay, so we know what we're doing next turn. We actually won't have a ton of uh, Bramble familiars left in the deck, so the third invasion is not actually all that useful. And yeah, we did not hit the best here. Another familiar will just be a 2-2 creature, so Leyline Binding for Mechanized Warfare is probably the best we can do here. At least we shouldn't be dead here, and we get another shot at Invasion. But we also milled another Bramble familiar, so we actually don't have any left. Yeah, that's painful. So, Invasion doesn't do anything whatsoever. Opponent with Chandra. And, uh, yeah, what else can I do? Play Luka, add mana, play Familiar. It's not that exciting when our opponent can just Lightning Strike to kill Familiar. And they'll get a 2 2 haste next turn as well, so, yeah, could just be dead if they go Mechanized Warfare, play a land, Lightning Strike. The plan is just to fetch quest next turn once again and hoping to get lucky. So let's go for it. This can add mana or make a beast. Adding mana I guess builds up more loyalty and a 3-3 would still die to a lightning strike. So yeah, we've got the mana to fetch quest next turn. But do we get another turn? Mechanized Warfare. Chandra can add mana, dealing two damage in the process, so we're at seven. I guess we would go to one. If they kill Familiar Attack, that's six damage. And one is not zero, but it doesn't leave us in a very healthy position. Let's bring things up to a simmer. Okay. So we'll see if they take out my Planeswalker instead. I think I prefer that actually. So we're still at seven. Don't really need Luka. Although it could have been nice to get rid of a bunch of creatures and a Planeswalker. But then we still would have been toast to a burn spell. So yeah, just gotta fetch quest for seven mana. And we hit Cemetery Desecrator, which is Probably better than Atraxa here, since we get to transform Invasion of Alara, destroy Mechanized Warfare, and copy Desecrator all at once. Is that better than making a 7-7 Flying Lifelink Vigilance? If they have two burn spells, they can pretty easily kill Atraxa with a Warfare out, and then we're just dead. So I think uh, Desecrator is safer. And then plenty of 7 drops we can get rid of. And then if we copy Desecrator we could also finish off Chandra with the ability. So we'll destroy Warfare. Ooh nice, we found a Flesh Gorger which I can now put in play. That certainly improves our odds. And then yeah, copy Desecrator to take out Chandra. I think over copying Flesh Gorger which also would be pretty decent. And then let's just put all our counters on Flesh Gorger. Okay, 
And then a five mana is enough to take out Chandra. Remove counters. Okay. Your move. Could still be that to triple burn spell. Kumano puts us to six. So now we should still be okay. Play with fire puts us to four. Lightning strike puts us to one. <laughs> and yeah, we're down to one. And our opponent explodes. Flash Gorger next turn gets to attack, gain 10. And that's another red deck defeated on the brink of death. All right, so we get to see our five color Invasion of Alara fetch quest deck in action. And oh boy, is this one exciting to play and hopefully to watch as well. Now, of course, our deck is incredibly reliant on Invasion of Alara. So whenever it gets countered, discarded, or if we fail to draw it, which can also happen, we might even take a mulligan or two and still not see any copies, then we're going to be in serious trouble because our deck is pretty underpowered without it. Just casting a Flesh Gorger and hoping for the best is unlikely to work out in most scenarios. So I think that's also going to be reflected in the deck's overall win rate. I would not be shocked if it's close to 50%. So I don't think this is necessarily the best choice for the ranked ladder if you just want to rank up efficiently but that's not going to stop me from playing it since the deck is just a blast to play so yeah that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd